If I say TGS to you, it probably means one or two things. It could be the name of a show within 30 Rock, very funny, or if you're a gamer, it could only mean one thing, which is Tokyo Game Show. The crew of Gadget Nation headed there not too long ago. Sadly, I couldn't go, and this is a follow-up to exactly what was on display there. I haven't seen it myself, so now I'm very excited. Welcome to the second part of the travel log of Gadget Nation in Japan. We spend the second evening visiting Shibuya before heading back to Tokyo Game Show the next morning. After an hour and a half of commuting, hello again, Makuhari Mese. This year, Level 5 made a successful return to the show floor with 10 titles spread across a broad spectrum of gaming consoles, smartphones, and other digital entertainment mediums. Among the titles showcased this year, is Professor Layton and the Asran Legacies. The newest and final chapter of the Professor Layton series has shipped over 13.5 million copies around the world. This final chapter takes puzzle solving around the globe in the Professor's latest adventure. The title will be released in Japan in 2013. I'm a little bit disappointed by this uh, this year's TGS because a few exhibitors are, are missing. Uh, there are not so much game to see and even less to play. So uh, this is not a very good year for TGS. But there are, there are a few games uh, I, I will expect. Uh, like, um, for example, um, a title, an Namco Bandai game, it's uh, Project X Zone, and uh, a few games like that, but not so much, unfortunately. How was it last year? You've been here before. Yeah, last year it was, it was a little bit disappointing too, but not so disappointing, in fact. It, there was a few games I really liked, but this year uh, I, I can count them on my hand, in fact. It's, it's, it's a, bit, a little bit sad for the um, Japanese video game industry. Next year is going to be another DGS. Yeah. Do you have any expectation or hopes that you want to see next year? More games, uh, more creativity, uh, more exhibitors, uh, and if possible, um, booths that, are, that may be more open to, um, to the media, because it's very tough to, to, to get in because there are a lot of people around and they are always stopping you at the entrance so it's it's uh, not very uh, media friendly can you name us one or two of your favorite games favorite games yeah. of all time of all time um, i would say street fighter 3 and uh, shadow of the colossus how was it two years ago it was much better Right now, there is almost nothing compared to Gamescom or E3, E-Cube. Not so much new game. So it's more... I think now Tokyo Game Show is more uh, for uh, Japanese people with uh, otaku game and stuff like that. How do I... Tokyo game to well, I come to play game, but uh, I always hope to play new game, not game that were presented before. I want to discover a new game. For instance, yesterday I played for the first time Layton versus Ace Attorney. So this one was good. And also Ace Attorney 5 that were not presented before. But it's a Japanese game. So again, Tokyo Game Show is for Japanese people, I guess. When you come to TGS, you expect to see the best of the Japan gaming culture. Because they have this show in Los Angeles for the Western people. 
And this show in Japan is normally really focused on all the Japan industry. Now these days it's getting smaller. There have been some troubles with Japan industry during the last years, so it might be the reason. Also Nintendo like is not part of the show and is a big game, uh, the big player in the industry here. But uh, yeah, definitely when you come here you expect to see some very special games that you won't maybe even see on your western market. They will never get released out of Japan. Uh, that's a good thing about it. You, you experience new way to play, new games, new concepts. And um, it's part of Japan culture. And here with me, I'm at a group of Evertrip, and they are a company from Moscow, Russia. And this is Alexei. Alexei here is going to introduce us this new technology and new product that they call Evertrip. So, Alexei, yes. how does it work here? I can see this camera must be somewhere in Moscow, isn't it? So, how does it work? Yeah, basically, it is the video, video entertainment system that allows you to travel online in the real world, in the real city, uh, in the real time, using your PC or a game console, from anywhere in the world to anywhere in the world, basically, in potential. So you need two people for a journey, a scout that is inside the city, like right now, and a user who uses the console, like I said, or a PC, who, using our software over here, and a control panel can do whatever he wants in that city. Walk, talk, sit on the bench, go shopping, or anything he wants. So this is the interaction with the real world, that real city, that can be a thousand miles from you in a real time. So right now the service is still in development, isn't it? Sorry? Still in development? Uh, we have actually finished the development of the technology. We're better testing it right now. We're going to we're going to start testing it in United States uh, in about a month. Uh, and we have some customers there. We have very good market for it. There's a people with disabilities, some kind of disability, who cannot, for some reason, cannot travel around the world. So we start this project, the market for which is huge, the traveling, the general, but we picked this small niche from the beginning, people with disabilities. So we, we're going to put this system into the centers for those people to help them explore the world. So um, right now, what is the biggest challenge for you guys? The biggest challenge is uh, to choose the partner that would fit the idea, the ambitions, our ambitions about worldwide, because if we focus somewhere we can get stuck there so the biggest chance is to choose the partner and of course to find a good financial sponsorship because uh, to unfold it worldwide takes a lot of uh, money and resources so the one very important part the technology itself and the idea and the team is there so the second one is to put those together Another thing, uh, looking back at the service, do you really do you need to connect to a TV or anything to use the service? Like well, uh, you can use your PC, you can use your game console, like if we're sitting here, we have a PlayStation or an Xbox, doesn't matter, you can log in and do the same thing. Uh, right here, we on this exhibition, we found a lot of interest from mobile application, uh, mobile developers. Everybody asks if we can do it on, on iPhone or Samsung, it doesn't matter, on any smartphone. And we haven't developed this uh, yet, but it's not that difficult for us. So yes, you can use it from almost virtually any device. So I can see that that's certainly the novelty factor is there, and I believe that there's a potential for it to grow thank you very bigger. Much. So thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us on the show. Thank you. Fast and Furious! Tokyo looks like so much fun. I wish I could have gone. Maybe, just maybe, I shall go next year. Now, if you missed out any of the content from today's show, etc., don't forget we're on YouTube. Look up Enjoy Awani. You can also find us Facebook, Twitter, and many other methods as well. 
Next week though, Samsung and Sharp. We've got something to showcase from both those big brands. I personally can't wait and I shall see you then.